Hi guys, how you doing? My name is Vivian Martin. I'm the Director of Business Systems at Covenant Hills Treatment Centers. Oh great, there we go. I have a husband of 35 years, two adult daughters. Um, I have a certified wildlife habitat in my backyard and a certified butterfly garden. I've been an in-house file maker developer since 2007. I morphed from being the accountant. And maybe some of you can relate to that. I couldn't get anything I needed, so I created a system to help me do my job, and then that just morphed until now I'm primarily an in-house developer and I do very little accounting anymore. I enjoy line dancing, swimming, biking. I've been to a few dev cons, yep. Uh, if you notice, I have a little bit of an accent. I'm originally from Houston, Texas, but I've been living in uh, Southern California for 31 years. I still can't lose the accent. Covenant Hills Treatment Centers. We help people with substance abuse problems. We've been in business since 1994, and I've been with them since October 30th of the year 2000. We have 50 beds and four different facilities, all, like, all located in Southern California. We're dual diagnosis, you may not know what that means, and we're CARF accredited. So, when we get a call from someone to our call center, they're in crisis mode, right? They've made the decision to try to get help, either for themselves or for a loved one. When you're in crisis mode, I don't know if you've ever been in a crisis. I was in Spain and Madrid when bombs went off at the airport and we were having trouble getting home and I, we were in crisis mode. We couldn't think straight. You don't think quite straight when you're in crisis mode. So we get callers who are scared, who are worried, who are angry, who are confused. They're in that state, and I can relate to this because a little less than six years ago, I found out my daughter was a heroin addict. Now, I have lived, I have worked at, lived, yeah, practically have. I've worked at Covenant Hills for 12 years at that time, and I thought that would never happen to our family. I went into crisis mode. I worked there. I had all the support in the world. I went to lunch with our owner almost every day. But when it was me, when it was, I was the one, things were different. I told my boss what was going on and he had the wise advice of saying, let's go to lunch and talk about it. So we went to lunch and he could tell I wasn't in any state to make any decisions. And he just said, do you want me to handle this? And I said, I couldn't even say yes, I just nodded. And he said, I'll take over. He sent me on an errand, and when I came back, he said, your daughter's being picked up at 2.30, you're out of it. So this crisis mode, when people call in, they're talking to a counselor, and I thought, wouldn't it be great? We're already using FileMaker for all of our call logs. Anytime a call comes in, we make a record and put in information about it, and that record may or may not become a client record. Wouldn't it be great if they didn't have to do one little thing and that's ask for the phone number? I know it's a simple little thing, but what's your phone number? Blah, 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 blah. I didn't hear it, blah, 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 blah. They're in crisis mode and every second counts. You don't know, they could be on the edge of suicide. So I just thought, is there any way I can help with this? So I wanna ask you guys something. Do you know what I'm about to say? Yak se mash. Dobje yakti. Did anybody understand me? Como uh, vachu. Anybody understand me? Como estas? A few people? Okay. I was speaking Czechoslovakian, which my father spoke fluent Czech, and you couldn't understand me because we don't, you don't speak Czech. It's not a common language. How could I get FileMaker? to speak a common language with my phone system. Could that happen? Oh, I have to point over here. I had heard rumors about Jason, the resting ape, and I thought, how could that help me in my quest 
to get my two applications to talk to each other. Well, although this little guy is adorable and looks like a cute little cuddle bug, he can't help me. So I investigated a little bit more and found out something called rest. Oh, I keep, have, I keep pointing over here and it's over here. Rest API. But thinking about resting ape makes it a little less intimidating. I don't know why I think an ape is less intimidating than REST API, but I do. Basically, REST API, which is, you probably already heard this, representational state application programming interface is just a common language. So if I had said yakse mash and someone here would have responded dobje yakti, we're using English as a common language to communicate. But how does API work? Look, I'm no genius, but I think I can figure this out. No, but I can't figure out pointing in the right direction. That's too hard. So my investigation led me to developer conference 2018 in, well, actually it was in Grapevine, Texas. How many people were there? Yeah? Did you notice how many sessions there were, were on REST API? There were a lot. And I attended every one that I could find. I, was, I still didn't quite get it. And what's funny, and Mr. Uh, Delinsky just walked in, we were going over how to do this REST API thing and one of the FileMaker photographers shot our picture. So we are literally going over the documentation in this picture and ended up on the website. I thought that was gratuitous. All right. <laughs> I'm pointing in the right direction. It's still not turning. There we go. So what, what you have to do first is you want to talk to another application. Does it have an API? Does it know this common language? Well, it turns out I got in touch with our uh, telephone guys and I asked them this question and they said no. They said no, but it's coming out in July. So they got it going in July. We met, FileMaker was in August and um, I had my, I was armed with this documentation and I was like, we can do this. So the first thing you have to do is make sure there's an API. You got to get the documentation. And according to the documentation, the first thing I had to do, and you will too, is enable your API on the server. Whatever application you're using, you have to enable it, it depending, of course, on what API you're getting, but this is what I had to do. It also told me what information I was going to need. I was going to need the IP address of the PBX server that was on my network. I needed the port number. I needed the software version, and this is very important. The software version is very important. And I needed a username and password. So I gathered all that information, and we started to go to work. Still not changing. Yaystar requires MD5 encryption. Have you guys heard of that before, most of you? I don't know. I hadn't. And I didn't know that FileMaker could handle this. Now to me, this function, okay, it says container attribute. So I put my password in a text file, but using this function encrypts it into MD5. So it's just not real intuitive that that function can work on text, but it does. So I got my, I got my encrypted password so you don't have to be a genius, but you have to have a token. And let me tell you, I, I like to think of things in relationship to other things. So a few years ago, many years ago, a movie came out called While You Were Sleeping. I don't know if anybody of you, any of you remember that movie, but at the end, Sandra Bullock is working in a toll booth and Bill Pullman comes up and um, it's a toll booth for a commuter train. So you can't get past the gate, and he drops a wedding ring, an engagement ring, in the token tray. And he goes, 
I have something to ask you. Can I come in? And she said, no, not without a token. So to me, that kind of went, oh, yeah, you have to have a token to get in. You have to have something that says, I'm authorized. I'm okay. I can come in. So this is my actual script that asks my, my PBX server for that token. The top, the blue, is the format that my PBX system is asking for. You can see it says um, your IP address, and in that case it's 192.168.1.249. The 8088 is my port. I have to tell it that it's an API request, and then the version of the software I'm using, and then I'm telling it what I want to do. The endpoint is login. And then, in the curl options, I'm going to give it my password and username. So the way I like to look at this is, it's a little bit like perform script. And I'm, that made me feel a little bit more comfortable in doing this. So you're kind of performing a script that goes to a different application, speaking this same language. And to me, the options are a lot like script parameters. So you do this call. Oh, there's one thing I wanted to tell you. We set everything up and it didn't work. We went over it and over and over it again and again and again and it didn't work. So we called our uh, phone people and we said, why isn't this working? It turns out the documentation was wrong. So it's just a little warning that the documentation could be wrong. It required the letter V. My name is Vivian, you know, V. V got me on this one. You have to put the letter V in front of the version. So I just want to tell you that in case it doesn't work, you might double check to see if it could possibly be a documentation problem. Oh my gosh, I gotta go faster. Um, so we do the, I, we use JSON to get the password in the right, uh, in the right format, and this is the actual curl option post. You, that's what we did, and this is what we got back. We got back our token. You take that token, and that authorizes you to get the information you need. You can ask your query now that you have your token. And this is the format I needed to quiz that extension. So what happens is someone calls your extension, you click a button, answer the phone, a record is made, and that phone number plops into the field. This is the actual script step that does that. The result I put, obviously, in a variable. I used a in the curl options, I give it the extension. That's actually, I, I just typed that in to show you where the extension was. And this is what we get back. What a mess, huh? Hard to read that. So FileMaker is great about this wonderful function called JSON format elements. And it takes that mess that's hard to read and does this so you can read it better. And JSON, it, it's not that hard to read. So the first, uh, the, the first word, the first, I don't know why, is like a field and the second is your data. So from, this is who the call came from and that's the phone number. And in the bottom it says your status is successful. So this is what my user sees. They click on that button, and that's all they have to do. And then it creates a record and sticks the phone number in the correct field. My investigation is over. I have success. I got that phone number. Yay! Is it really over? What else can we do? 
well, actually, there's some really cool things I can do with my phone system. I can actually place calls from FileMaker, from a, from a phone field. I can just click it, and what happens, my phone will just ring once, and if I pick it up, the call will go through. So there's lots of other things we can do. We have a new marketing person, and he came up to me, I mean, he just started two weeks ago, and he came up to me and he says, does FileMaker have an API? Yes, yes it does. I was so excited. I said, why do you want to know? He goes, well, we have call tracking metrics. I don't know if you've heard of that. It records every call. It, um, it records where the call came from, what 800 number was called, all kind, length of the call, all kinds of information. So getting that information, we can find out what marketing campaigns worked. So this, so I thought, I wonder what their API documentation looks like. All I had to do was Google call, call tracking metrics API, and this website came up, and it has all kinds of support, and that is it. So that's what I did with my API, and what do you think you can do? I may have session updates, and please remember to fill out your session evaluation, and thank you so much for your time. <laughs> 15 minutes. <laughs>